Hello everyone, today we are doing notes on slope. So all of you that are algebra students, geometry students, whatever kind of students you are, advanced topics or otherwise, we're gonna be talking about slope and slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Now when we're talking about slope, uh, oftentimes we think of skiing. So skiing, people often say, oh, let's hit the slopes. What does that mean? It's talking about how steep something is. So it's kind of implied that when you say hit the slopes, it's, it's something that's steep. So how steep something is. And I can't remember if it's two E's or I think it, I think it's two E's. How steep something is. Uh, nope, it is EA. So how steep something is. EA, there you go. Now, how do we determine slope mathematically, okay? So how would you think of slope? Think of a mountain. Okay, a mountain goes vertically very quickly, but horizontally, okay, for that vertical change, it doesn't move very much horizontally. Think of something that's very, very flat, like a plane, a field, okay? Very flat. It doesn't go vertically hardly at all, but it goes very far horizontally for that same vertical change, okay? How do we express this? Well, we can say that slope is our vertical. And what does this triangle mean? This triangle means change. It's delta. Delta is the Greek letter for change. So vertical change over horizontal change. Okay, so the change vertically divided by the horizontal change will tell you how steep it is. So if the number, if it changes a big, 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 big number for vertical, but very small for horizontal, it's gonna be a big slope, a steep slope. But if it's very small, okay, so we have a small number here and a very big number here for horizontal, then it's gonna be very flat because the horizontal change is greater than the vertical change. Uh, and that will equal a, a small slope. So vertical, again, what is that in terms of mathematics? It is the change in y over the change in x. x is our horizontal axis, y is our vertical axis. How do we find the change in y? Well, you may remember the distance formula we talked about y2 minus y1. You can honestly do y1 minus y2 as long as you are consistent on the top and bottom. So if I'm doing y2 minus y1, I also need to do 2 minus 1. Uh, excuse me, y, 2 minus 1 on the top, I also need to do 2 minus 1 in the bottom. Now, the most common uh, phraseology that you hear is rise over run. That's the most common, uh, and I will use that from basically here on out. It's the, the easiest thing to visualize. Rise is up and down. Run is left and right. Okay, the slope is also known as the average rate of change average rate of change. Um, anytime you have per units per like miles per hour, that's a rate that is a um, rate of change. That is a slope. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into these problems. Find the slope through the points two, negative one, negative five, three. Your first step is always going to be label first. That's your first step is labeling. How, what do I mean by labeling? Well, exactly how it sounds. We're gonna label the points. Let me use this purple, very neutral. So we label X1, Y1. A common mistake I see is people labeling X1, X2. Don't do that, please. The X's and Y's need to go together. The ones and the twos need to go together. So X1, Y1, X2, Y2. What do I do from here? Well, I just take my Y2 minus Y1 divided by my X2 minus X1. Okay, if you can't remember, rise over run, you rise with the y's and you run from your x. Okay, that's kind of a way to, kind of a silly way to remember it, but you rise with the y's, you run from your x, run goes on the bottom, x's go on the bottom. So we're going to do y2, which is 3, minus negative 1. I always put it in parentheses anytime I'm subtracting a negative number. And then I have negative 5 minus 2. So we get four on the top, we get negative seven in the bottom, and that's it, that's our answer, okay? Three minus negative one is a positive four. Find the slope of the line, four x minus y equals negative eight, okay? Um, I'm not sure if it wants us to plug in points, we could use a table here to find points, so I guess we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so we're gonna make our table, 
okay? And we can plug in points here for X and then also for Y. So I guess for X, I'll plug in zero and I'll see what we get. Once you plug in zero for X, you get negative Y equals negative eight. That means Y is gonna equal eight. So zero, eight. And I guess I could plug in zero for Y and see what I get for X. So I plug in zero for Y, I get four X equals negative eight. And uh, I get X equals negative two. I'm doing this quickly. I've done this before using a table to find values. So that's why I'm doing it quickly, just to demonstrate that we can find two points. Once we have our two points, we have zero comma eight and negative two comma zero. We can call this one X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So now we're gonna do Y2 minus Y1 in the top, zero minus eight in the top, over, uh, what is this? X2 minus X1 in the bottom. This is equal to our slope. So we get negative eight over negative two, that equals positive four, so four is our slope. Now some of you might re uh, recognize that this is almost in slope intercept form, which we're gonna talk about later, but let's just say you're familiar with this already, you're like a wise guy and you're like, hey, I, I already know how to do it in slope intercept form. Just to reassure you that you can do that, I would add y to both sides, you get four x equals negative eight plus y, then I would add eight to both sides, Okay, so add eight and we get four X plus eight equals Y. And you can see that our slope, that number four is uh, verified. Find the slope of the following lines, then find the equations. Okay, so if, let's, let's start with our first, uh, first objective and let's go with the green line. So the green line, uh, we're gonna find our slope first. So let's go ahead and keep using purple. X1, Y1, label first, X2, Y2. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do our slope just like we did uh, before. So our slope for line M is going to be three minus three in the top over four minus a negative two in the bottom. I get zero, and it's not gonna matter what I get in the bottom, but let's go ahead and be consistent, and I get zero for my slope. Okay, we haven't had an experience of this yet. Okay, I guess I'll go ahead and do slope for line L also. Uh, X1, uh, Y1, I almost called it Y, uh, X2, don't make that mistake, Y2, so I get negative uh, 3 minus 6 in the top, and in the bottom I get negative 7 minus a negative 7, so I get negative 9 over 0, uh-oh, this is undefined because we divided by 0, don't mistake this for zero so i get undefined here now these are kind of two special cases especially line l uh, anytime we have a slope of zero uh, the line is simply going to be y equals a number so in this case we have y equals okay and here we looked where's our clues okay y equals three for both these points this point right here, the y-intercept, is 0, 3. This point right here looks like, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3. Notice that 3 is always constant for this. This is everywhere that y equals 3. The x value changes, but the y stays the same, so our equation equals y equals 3. Now, for a vertical line, it's a little bit different uh, scenario. We have these points, okay, so our... It doesn't cross the y-axis, that's why it's not in a typical form. But we do have the point negative seven, zero, our, our x-intercept. We have this point, which is negative seven, comma, three. You'll notice here that all of these values have negative seven. So what does that mean for the x? What does that mean? So we have x equals negative seven. It's everywhere that x equals negative seven. So the equation of a vertical line is gonna be undefined slope, and it will be in the form of x equals a number, where anytime we have a zero slope, it's a horizontal line, and it's always gonna be the form of y equals a number with a zero slope. Um, okay, I think this is the same one we had before. Oh, I think what I was supposed to do is I was supposed to show you that I can get this into to y-intercept form. So let me go ahead and show that. I used a table before. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you uh, another way to do it, I guess. Negative four X minus four X. This time I'm subtracting four X from both sides. I think it's actually a little quicker this way, but it requires a little bit more diligence. 
in terms of staying consistent with your negatives. So now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. That means I divide all terms on the right by negative 1. I get y equals 4x plus 8. Now, <laughs> that was supposed to be the grand reveal. Totally blew it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so what do you notice? Where do you see it's the same equation? Do you remember the 4 from earlier? Yes, you do, right here. There's the four. That's what we found out when we did the y2 minus y1. We got that same four. So you'll notice that when it's in this form where y is by itself on one side of the equal sign, that the number in front of x will be the slope. This is called slope intercept form. See, they're supposed to, it's supposed to be such a great transition. All right, so slope intercept form, you'll generally see uh, slope intercept form where you have your m and your b m equals your slope and b equals your y intercept okay i usually abbreviate abbreviate it as y i n t but that's your y intercept that's where it crosses the x uh, excuse me the y axis okay now, you pro you're probably very familiar with this form, so we're going to kind of just leave it here for now. Y needs to be by itself. Uh, the slope can always be written. Whoops, let me make this green. The slope can always be written as a fraction to have rise over run. Okay, I'm just trying to see. I think I'm going to stop at types of slope. So we're going to do example with a slope and step form, and then we'll do types of slope um, in the next video. Okay, I just wanted to give you a heads up. So graph the described line. We have slope equals two-thirds, y-intercept equals zero, negative four. Write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Um, I mean, honestly, we could do b before we do a. We already know that this is our m and this is our b. If our y-intercept is zero, negative four, we're only interested in the y value. In this case, it's four. So this is our y-intercept. So if we were to write this equation, Okay, it would be, let's see, x. So we have, I'm gonna write it up here. We have our x, we have our y, we have our equal sign, and we have our plus sign, okay? So our slope is two over three. So we just put the two over three in front of the x. That's our slope. That's our rise over our run, and it always goes in front of x. It's always the coefficient of x. And then we add that negative four on there because that is our y-intercept. Now, a cleaner way to look at this is to not just write plus a negative four, even though if you want to, you can. It's just really not best practice there. We just make it minus four and we see, okay, that's a negative four y-intercept. Now, how do we graph this? Pretty simple process. The first thing we always want to do if we're graphing is you start with the start with y-intercept. That's going to be your first point. You only need two points to graph a line, so you always want to start with your first point, which is just a gimme, okay? It's really easy. We always start with the y-intercept. Let's make it red. Stands out a little bit more. So I just go down to negative 4 on the y-axis, and I'll make a dot. That's the point uh, 0, comma, negative 4. Whoops. If it was a positive 4, you would go up. If it's negative 4, you go down. Now, my slope. This is the part... Uh, that some people struggle with so I'm gonna try to be as clear as possible. So my slope equals 2 over 3 That means if it's positive, I'm moving in the positive y direction in the positive x direction If it's a positive 2 that means I'm gonna be going up two units And if it's a positive 3 that means I'm going to the right three units for clarification I always like making the bottom positive it's the top that either becomes positive or negative, okay? So I always like moving left to right as I'm making my graph. Now, can you move right to left? Yes, you can. Uh, it's not wrong, but my experience is students get confused when you go right to left. So always try to move from the leftmost point to the rightmost point. That's just kind of an, a good practice. So what am I going to do here? I need to go up two units from where? I always start at my y-intercept. So start from the y-intercept and use your slope. In this case, a rise of two. So that was rise two. And then I'm going to run three units. So three units is one, two, three. Okay. 
some people get tempted to put a dot here and then they put another dot here and then they make a triangle or something. I don't know what that's about. You need to rise and then run and then you get your final location. Now we have two dots. That's all we technically, technically need to make this line. Okay. Uh, a way to check your answer is you can just, or to, to verify you did this correctly, is we can go rise again, rise two, run three. Well, I didn't do a great job drawing this line because I should have got to this point here. I should have got here. One, two, three. I should have got there. And that will look a little bit better, I think. Yeah. Okay. Not that my other one was terribly wrong. Now, one thing I'll, I want to show before I end this video is you can actually go in reverse and get the same thing. So I can go down two units. Instead of going up, I go down, and I do the exact opposite. Instead of going right three units, I can go left three units, and I get to the same spot. Well, not the same spot, but I get to another point on my line. That makes sense. Some people, they try to do go in reverse and they end up like over here because they went right three units. And then we got this little V shape here. You don't want that. That's how you know you did it wrong. You should be uh, landing on a straight line, both to the right and to the left. That's all I got for part one. Stay tuned for next time when we talk about types of slope. See you soon.